and welcome to CreatingForGrace.com. Today we're going to make this super cute bee spinner card. Actually the background is made from the watercolor wash and I did that in the Daffodil Delight so stamp pad. And I used a heavy white cardstock for the spinner portion um, just because I thought it would hold up better than the Whisper White which is a thinner cardstock. All the pieces that we're going to use today are in the Shooting Star stamp set and the Sliding Star uh, which can be bought as a bundle and you save 15%. So this is the piece that we used right here for the slider portion and it works better when it's done as a smiley face rather than a rainbow. So you'll get a better slide back and forth. There's also a round slider part that you could make. This is the part that I used for the beehive and this is the part that I used for the big bee. And there also is little tiny bees. Um, I stamp mine direct to paper, but that would be an option too. And also don't forget, even though the stamp set comes with all this framelit set, you still have the slider portions that you can use with any stamp set, any figure that you want to make have motion on your card. So it's actually really super versatile. Again, here's the card. A little bee spins through there. I've already done the base and I pre-stamped my bees on there and then I did the honey hot honey, uh, <laughs> the beehive already and colored that and on the back I added a half of a dimensional because I wanted to give him a popped up look and the strips that you see here are the tear and tape anytime I do a three-dimensional object I want something that's a little stronger adhesive and so I took a piece of this and cut it and then I also cut it in half so it would be very skinny strip and I stuck a little tiny part on top and also on one of the pennies I use the sticky strip too because that's what I'm going to use to adhere my big bumblebee and that's the part that's going to be in motion. So anytime I have anything that has any kind of tension on it or mo movable parts or anything like that, that's what I use. So I'm going to take the little tear and tape adhesives off the back of those. And the part about the spinner card that you want to remember too is completely finish your front before you uh, put the adhesive on the back or mount it to anything. So, and there's that, and he's going to be popped up just that little bit, so not a lot. I've also pre done a strip. It says you're sweet as can be, and I've done it with a staple here, and I was just going to show you a really easy way to flag the ends. So, we've already mounted it on the black. But if you start right in the center of the part that you're going to flag, and then you go from the corner to the end, and again from the corner to the end, that's a very easy way to get that flagging centered, which is really nice. So rather than staple it direct to the paper, I actually am just going to add a little bit of our adhesive. And I'm going to center him just about there. So I also used our new foam adhesive strips and I actually cut apart directly in half just like this. And these are nice for any kind of window card or a pop-up card that you want to have like a shaker card. It makes making the frames very easy. So I put one on the bottom and one on the top. And then I'm going to put one in the center. And I'm not going to do too super close to where the slider would be spinning. I'm going to put it just about here. Just like that. So that's actually going to be the front of my card. And our spinner part is going to spin through this direction. For this, you're going to need to take one of our dimensionals and then you're going to cut just, and it's much less than you think it would be, just a very tiny tip off of each corner, just like that. And the reason that we're doing that is because you want him to make that turning inside and you don't want to have it stopping on the little corners. 
And so if you take those off, you're going to get a much cleaner spin and you won't have something stopping that momentum. So I'm going to put that right directly in the middle of the penny. And I'm going to put, so you have your penny at dimensional with the little edges cut off. You're going to have a second penny, just like that, that creature your penny sandwich there. And then I had already put a piece of sticky strip onto the penny here. And I'm going to tear that part off. And then I'm just going to center the B right on there so that when he spins, he'll be spinning on the inside. So he's done. I got my little bee sandwich done and ready to go. All the coloring that I did, I just used actually the basic black Stampin' Right marker. I also used the Crush Curry because I knew I wanted a little more of a golden yellow rather than the Daffodil Delight on the background because I wanted it to stand out a little bit. And I also used the Gold Wink Estella for the wings. And so those actually have some shimmer to them. And when I did the stamping, I always tell people, don't forget to make your envelopes pretty as well. So I did some of the little bees and did the same with the inks and the Wink Estella on those. So that part is all ready to go. I also use the heavy white cardstock for the base. And I always cut my bases depending on how I'm going to orient the card. So this one was an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and I cut it at the five and a half mark. And then I turned it sideways and I scored it at four and a quarter, which is directly in half. And that makes your standard A2 card size. We are gonna be doing a video tutorial here pretty soon on a lot of the stamping basics. And one of them is typical matting sizes. And that should make everything much easier. I always tell people also use the bone folders that we have because you're gonna get a much crisper edge. So you just run it along that score line there. The inside mat, I like to go down a quarter of an inch. So when I cut that, your finished size for your base is gonna be the four and a quarter by five and a half. So when I cut this, I'm cutting a piece of paper at four inches by five and a quarter. And that's gonna make it stand just like that but I wanted to have some kind of contrasting background. And so I knew I wanted the back, the black behind you, pardon me. And so I did an eighth of an inch all the way around instead of that quarter of an inch. So that'll give it just barely enough background. But if I would have left it like that, you would have had back black behind the spinner. And so what I did is I did another piece in the Daffodil Delight and that is gonna be exactly the same size as your yellow base, the four inches by the five and a quarter. So it's gonna fit directly on top of each other so the yellow will only show through on the spinner part. So I'm gonna mount that right now using our Snap It Up Snail Adhesive. So just like that, and then it's really a matter of eyeballing an even border all the way around. And it's gonna be very tiny for that portion. And then this part, don't forget, we had already done the foam adhesive strip, so this is not gonna be directly to, you wanna have that dimension there to allow your little bumblebee to spin. And so this part, you are gonna lay literally right on top of that yellow. Just like that. And so when you are looking directly at the card, you're only gonna see the yellow here, then the black as the background. And this is our bee sandwich that we made right here. We're gonna slide one end right inside here, and then you're gonna lift up a little bit on that, just enough to allow him to slide. And what I found is the more that you slide him around, um, it kind of evens out that base and he'll move much more freely so and start spinning so you can see he's spinning just fine right now the last part that I did since we don't carry the little tiny eyes um, I wanted my bumblebee to have some googly eyes we do have an adhesive that is absolutely perfect for that and so we have the fine tip glue pen and when you open that up you can see there's actually a needle inside that helps keep the tip flowing freely. And it's gonna take very little of that adhesive, just two small dots, and then you'll just fit that 
tiny pin back into the lid and that's what keeps it um, open. So I have a couple of the little googly eyes that are here and I'm just going to pick one up and I'm going to drop him right there and I'm going to move him into place and then this other one do the same thing here and it dries fairly quickly so once you move them into place we'll let that dry for a minute and then there's our finished card and he slides and it's hard for me to show the actual spinning effect because I have to keep it flat for the video camera but you get the idea so there's the card and the envelope all pretty up Thank you so much. I hope you like the project today, and I hope it inspires you to go create some pretty things. Happy creating!